Hello and welcome to our Lord's Supper on Sunday the 27th of December. Throughout 2020, the focus of our Lord's Suppers has been on various names of God from the Old Testament. And today we're thinking about Yahweh Rohi, the Lord, my shepherd. Now, the idea of today is that you start off with a meal, some food, whether you're uh, together with others or on your own. Have a meal and to reflect on some of the questions um, in the green box here at the top of your worksheet. Let me uh, read them to you. Uh, here's the first one. What has been challenging, but also what opportunities has God given you in 2020? Secondly, when have you found that God has been closest to you over this year? And thirdly, read Psalm 23. Which parts of this psalm strike the biggest chord for you as you think back over your experiences this year? So I would suggest if you haven't done that already, then uh, pause the video in a moment. Um, discuss those questions, uh, write some things down, reflect over the year past and then come back. You also will need to have um, some bread and some juice ready for when we share them together later on, uh, remembering Jesus' sacrifice for us. So uh, perhaps you need to go and do that and then you can come back to join us in a few minutes. So Yahweh Rohi, the Lord, my shepherd. I wonder what characteristics you most admire in leaders. What qualities do you think that a prime minister should have? Now, I'm sure we've all got various opinions about how we think our government is doing at the moment, but most of us would conclude that we'd rather not be in their shoes right now. Yahweh Rohi, the Lord, my shepherd, is a wonderful portrayal of both strength and gentleness, one who has great power and conviction, but also one who has love and care and tenderness. Rohi, the primary meaning of the word is to feed or to lead to pasture as a shepherd does with their flock. So Joseph in the Old Testament and his brothers were described as shepherds in these terms. David was also a shepherd before he became the king of Israel. But the word is also used figuratively to describe the relationship between the leader and the people. So when David became king, the Lord declared, you shall shepherd my people Israel and you shall become their ruler. Even Cyrus the Persian was described as God's shepherd as God used him to lead his people back out of exile into their homeland again. But later we read some terrible words that God spoke through the prophet Ezekiel as the leaders of Israel failed to be the leaders that God had them to be as shepherds of the people. Listen to these words from, from Ezekiel 34. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You have not strengthened the weak or healed those who are ill or bound up the injured. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd and they became food for all the wild animals. And so in judging the leaders of Israel and removing them from their roles, God said himself these wonderful and lovely words in chapter 34 of Ezekiel. He said, I will, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered. They will lie down in good grazing land and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Can you see those words? In God's covenant love, he was reminding his people that he was their ultimate shepherd and that he would come himself to lead them home. See the powerful blend of character, of strength, yeah, protection and direction, but also gentleness, love, care and intimacy, which a shepherd offers his sheep and which God offers his people. And this relationship is seen most wonderfully through Psalm 23, a prayer written by David, once a shepherd of the sheep before being chosen by God to be a shepherd of God's people, where the Bible describes him as leading with integrity of heart. 
David certainly knew what it was like to to protect sheep from danger. Do you remember when he uh, he put himself forward to be the one who would take on the the giant Goliath? He described how the fact that when he was a sheep, when he was out in the fields protecting his sheep, if there was a lion or a bear that took off a sheep in in its mouth, David would go and strike it um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and seize it by the hair and kill it so as to, to gain his sheep back and look after it. So as David wrote this psalm, maybe he wrote it later in his life, reflecting back over the many perils that he'd faced, not simply as a shepherd, but also as a man who faced many trials and many challenges. What better way for him than to describe the Lord as his shepherd, who had protected him, who had led him, who had looked after him and who had fed him all that time. It's probably the most well-known psalm and the most well-loved psalm that there is in the whole of Scripture, possibly because of its simplicity, but also because of its poetry and its intimacy of how it describes God's relationship with us, his people. So let's think of a few things that should strike us from this psalm. Here's the first thing, and you might want to follow this actually on your sheet here. I've got, got the main bullet points there, and you can jot a few extra things down. But the first thing is that God, uh, David was praying to a covenant God, Yahweh. It was the Lord, Yahweh, that personal God that David was praying to. Many people have taken comfort from this psalm over the years and maybe applied it to a God of their own making. But no, David doesn't. This isn't a God that David made, made up. This is Yahweh, the covenant making God, the God who has revealed himself and make, made specific promises to his people. It's him that we need to know. And it's only him whom we can find real comfort in Yahweh God. But the second thing is this, um, as the Lord is David's shepherd, he emphatically says that he lacks nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want of anything. No one and nothing else can truly satisfy other than the Lord and what he provides. What a challenge that is. But David was stating something that he'd learned over the years. Thirdly, in the phrases makes me lie down and leads me and refreshes me and guides me that David uses there. He describes how God's initiative was to guide David and the nation on the right paths and to lead them to a place of rest and plenty. That is what God was doing, leading his people to a place of goodness and fullness and wholeness. That is what God does. He has good plans for his people. But fourthly, Often, God's leading took David through some very dark valleys, a shadow behind which lay death itself. David faced the real possibility of death in his life. Do you remember? He was on the run from Saul, who felt, felt threatened by him as David was due to be the next king. And later on in his life, David was um, threatened also by his own son, Absalom, who, who tried to take the throne from him. So David knew what it was like to face death. But he could say that he had no fear because the Lord was his shepherd. God used his rod to fend off the wild beasts that threatened him and his staff to keep David on the right paths. David knew that very well, that God was faithful to him through the dark times. But fifthly, David knew that there was a victory banquet that awaited him. His enemies would look on as David's head would be anointed with oil and his cup would overflow as he experienced God's goodness, love and presence forever. Being in the presence of God forever is what David wanted and longed for. So there are things from David's reflections and David's psalm. But here's the sixth thing. Do you remember in our series on the Psalms, um, as we look through each of the Psalms, we realised that Jesus would have prayed each Psalm. And actually, each Psalm is fulfilled properly and ultimately in Jesus himself. And so Psalm 23 is a Psalm that Jesus would have read and prayed and sung and taken to heart for himself. He received the covenant promises from Yahweh God. He knew God as his father. And so Jesus is the one that we should remember ultimately fulfills um, all the promises that God made throughout this psalm. He lived out the experience of God the Father being his shepherd. God was guiding, God the Father was guiding and leading and feeding Jesus to a place of plenty. But as we know, 
on the way, God took, the, uh, took Jesus through the darkest valley, the darkest valley of the cross. The death that Jesus faced and experienced on the cross was the darkest valley of all. And as he took the sin of the world on his shoulders, Jesus knew what it was like to suffer and to go through the shadow of the valley, the valley of the shadow of death. But you know what? Jesus knew that there was a victory banquet awaiting him. Jesus rose from death, didn't he? And is seated at the Father's right hand in glory. Jesus knew that there was a joy ahead of him, which is why he endured the cross and suffered it. So Jesus knew this psalm very, very well. <laughs> but for us, how can we really take Psalm 23 and apply it to ourselves? By this. This is our journey if we are in Christ. We can know the Lord as our shepherd. We can lack nothing, knowing that we are protected and led by it and fed by the Lord our God, whose covenant promises are sure. What a challenge that is for us. It's a challenge for me as I look back over this past year for myself and think about all the things that I thought I needed, when in fact, really, the one thing I needed more than anything else was the Lord himself, in whom I lack nothing and we lack nothing. We can be confident that God is leading us to places of peace and plenty. God is always working for our good. Now, I have um, some things here, some yellow post-it notes, which I wonder if you recognise these, not recognise the words themselves, because you're not going to get so close to them. I'm not going to read them out. But last year, this time last year at our Lord's Supper, the very last Lord's Supper of the year, we did some post-it prayers where people wrote down prayers for the year that they would love others to pray for, stuck them on a board, and then people took some and then said that they would pray for those people over the year. Has God been faithful and been leading and guiding us over this year? On these prayers, there are all sorts of things that people have asked for prayer for, decisions to be made, people specifically to be praying for in those other people's lives, for protection, for guidance and direction. That's some of the things on this on these sheets here. But Yahweh Rohi has been working throughout this year in each of those people's situations. I've been praying for them, been digging them out and, and, and praying for these people every now and again. And God has been working on their journeys. I know that from reading some of these. So thank you. Praise you, God, for that. But we know that in our journeys towards peace and plenty that God is taking us on, there is a dark valley that we go through. There are many, many hard experiences that we go through because we know that there is suffering in this life, in this world. Some of that suffering is brought upon ourselves from our own sin. And some of it is because we live in a broken and fallen world where sin is present and we're all affected by it. The shadow of death hangs over us all. And we all have to seriously think about the, the, the things that are troubling and hard in life. There is a shadow of the valley of death. But like David and like Jesus, we can fear no evil. Why? Because God is our protector and our provider. Jesus, our good shepherd, laid down his life for his sheep on the cross to rescue us from evil and death and to lead us to security in God. Isn't that great? We need, need fear no evil because he is with us and he has died. Jesus has died for us. You know, one of the things that endeared many people to Boris Johnson as a leader this year was the fact that he contracted COVID, was in hospital, was actually quite ill for a, for a period of time. And when he came out, you could see that he could then identify with people's pain and suffering in a way which he may not have done otherwise. It shows that he became almost one of us and what we might go through. But even more so, Jesus, our saviour, knows what it's like to be in our place. Um, Jesus knows what it's like to be human and to suffer and to struggle. But Jesus, our good shepherd, laid down his life for us, our, his sheep, so that we may be protected from ultimate death and we need, need fear no evil. We are truly saved because of our good shepherd. We must praise him. And if you need to turn to Jesus for the first time to accept that salvation, then please do it. It'd be the best thing you've done 
and a great way to finish this year. But to rejoice for all of us, the fact that there is a banquet waiting for us to enjoy. Yes, we have blessings from God now, but there is a future eternal banquet in his glorious presence, which all of us can look forward to and know that it awaits us. Well, it's a good time, isn't it, for us to remember Jesus' death by sharing the bread and the juice together. And this is a great symbol for us to remember our good shepherd who died as his body was broken on the cross as he laid down his life for his sheep. And we remember in the juice, his blood that was shed for us um, on the cross, but offering us eternal life and an eternal future at peace with God. We're going to play the song, The Lord is uh, My Shepherd by Stuart Townend. And uh, why don't you share the bread, or the juice uh, with those uh, that you're with now or take it if you're on your own and uh, listen to this song, sing it, reflect on it and praise God for being our shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with all and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delights and I I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will For your endless 
So we're just about at the end of our time together today, but we've got a few questions that uh, you might want to think about, reflect on, pray through over the next few days on the bottom of your sheet here. What characteristic of the Lord as our shepherd do you most appreciate? What other qualities um, of him might you meditate on and praise him for? Secondly, from this journey through this psalm and from Jesus' sacrifice for you, how might you know God's deep love for you as one treasured by him? Perhaps that's something that you really need to take to heart at the moment. The third one is about listening to the shepherd. Now, sheep in the Middle East would know the voice of the shepherd guiding them and leading them. They would know his voice as opposed to other voices and, and tune into him. So for us, how will you, how will we seek to, to recognise, to listen to and respond to our shepherd's voice in 2021? And lastly, um, in what ways might you pray more for the church as a flock who are loved by the Good Shepherd rather than simply praying for individuals? So really, how can we pray for the whole church to be protected and guided by God as we look ahead? So there's some questions for you and um, I'd love to pray for us um, as we conclude and, uh, and commit each other to the Lord. Lord God, we thank you that you are indeed are Yahweh Rohi. You are our, our shepherd who loves us, who protects us, who guides us, who leads us and who feeds us. We thank you for your faithfulness to us over this year. We know that it's been a tough year for many and we know that uh, uh, there are still trials to come, but we are also confident that you are a covenant God committed to your people and you will love us and take care of us. Thank you so much. And we praise you for Jesus, our good shepherd, who laid his life down for his sheep to bring us freedom from sin, forgiveness from God and protection from the evils of this world, protected and knowing that we are yours and will be with you forever. We thank you that there is a, a, a heavenly banquet to look forward to and I pray that we would fix our eyes on where our true home is and we look forward to being perfectly with you, our God and our King one day. We thank you and we praise you. And we know that you love us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's it for today. Um, Happy New Year to you. And um, uh, if we don't chat before then, then um, we have another service then coming up on Sunday, the 3rd of January, which will be uh, details of which will be out very, very soon. So God bless you all.